Ohio and Pennsylvania, the Buckeye State and the Keystone State, two neighboring Midwestern states and these United States. Okay, well, Western Pennsylvania feels Midwestern, but Eastern Pennsylvania definitely feels Mid-Atlantic. Heck, you could even classify parts of Pennsylvania as part of the Northeast region of the country. It's a crossroads state, really. Um, but yeah, this video is about Pennsylvania and Ohio, and you know what? Both are crossroads states with easy access to so many great places. Both states sure do have a lot in common for real. First of all, both are part of the Rust Belt, a region of the country known for declining industry and rundown factories. Even decades after most of these factories have shut down, several cities in both states continue to lose population each year. Both are probably about to lose one electoral vote in the Electoral College because the population of both hasn't grown much in recent years. Hey, speaking of the Electoral College, ugh, Electoral College. If a presidential candidate wins either Ohio or Pennsylvania, odds are they are winning the entire election. Ohio and Pennsylvania pick winners, baby. Pennsylvania picked the winner for all but two presidential elections between 1789 and 1880. Both Ohio and Pennsylvania tend to be swing states in recent years, although Ohio seems to be more reliably Republican lately. Both have one Republican U.S. Senator and one Democratic U.S. Senator. Now, the governor of Ohio is a Republican, and the governor of Pennsylvania is a Democrat. But the state legislatures in both states currently have Republican majorities. Okay, enough about politics. Let's talk about the Amish. Seriously, both states have a larger Amish population than any other state in the country. Both are two of the most populated states in the country. Both have a very similar population density. Pennsylvania does have more people combined. Both have 10 metro areas that are ranked in the top 100 of most populated metros in the country. While Pennsylvania has the two biggest metros overall, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, Ohio has the seas tree of Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus, all of which are almost as big as the Pittsburgh metro. Both have similar climates. In general, humid continental in the north and humid subtropical in the south. Northern Ohio in the northwestern corner of Pennsylvania has a climate influenced by Lake Erie, however, and southwestern Pennsylvania's climate can be influenced by the nearby Atlantic Ocean. Pennsylvania is not a coastal state, though. Both get four seasons, and with the exceptions of the mountainous areas, both are generally warmer in the summer the further south you go and colder in the winter the further north you go. The Appalachian Plateau, a rugged region made up of dissected plateaus, runs right through both states. Both have the same type of natural disasters. You know, the occasional severe thunderstorm, floods, and blizzards. Both also can get tornadoes. The biggest industries in both are the same. That'd be healthcare, manufacturing, retail, and education. Agriculture is also big in both. The median age is similar in both. Both have a similar number of residents who identify as Christian and, quote, not religious. However, more consider themselves Roman Catholic in Pennsylvania and more consider themselves Evangelical Protestant in Ohio. Before we get into the differences between the two states, I need to shave. Which works out pretty well since this video is sponsored by Harry's. Harry's is a personal care brand that has reinvented the way you shave, helping you to shave in a premium, hassle-free way. We've got this shave gel that is phenomenal. It has aloe. I'm typically not a fan of shaving. I'm not just saying this because they sponsor my video. I Actually, it's, it, it's, a, it's a nice shave. All right, got the shaving gel on my face. Now I'm going to shave. The little hairs off my face. I might even shave some nose hairs. Their German manufactured blades are sharper than ever. Oh, don't try that at home. And they're still the same low price of $2 each. 
Look at that, it gets all the hair. And it just makes shaving a much more enjoyable experience. Nice, really nice. See, I can even get the nose hairs. Help Harry support great causes as they give 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to men, veterans, and LGBTQ plus youths in need. Redeem your trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash Mr. Beat. You'll get a five blade razor, weighted handle, a travel cover, and their foaming shave gel. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. All right, that's better. So what about their differences? First of all, Pennsylvania has been around longer. In fact, it was one of the original 13 colonies. Yeah, let's get into some history here. Humans have lived in the area for thousands of years. At the time of European arrival, the dominant American Indian tribes in modern day Pennsylvania were the Lenape Delaware, the Muncie Delaware, Susquehannock, Erie, Iroquois, and Shawnee. The dominant American Indian tribes in modern day Ohio were also the Erie and Shawnee, but additionally, the the Kickapoo. Many of the first Europeans to settle the area were fur traders who regularly traded with the aforementioned tribes. The French were mostly the ones who traded in the area, but the Dutch, English, and Swedes also traded in parts of modern day eastern Pennsylvania. Throughout the 1600s, this happened mostly peacefully, but there were the Beaver Wars, which saw the Iroquois teaming up with the English and Dutch, and on the other side, a bunch of Indian nations teaming up with the French. In 1655, the Dutch took over future southeastern Pennsylvania, but within a couple decades, the English had full control of it. Meanwhile, modern-day western Pennsylvania and Ohio were claimed by France as part of New France. On March 4th, 1681, Charles II of England granted a dude named William Penn the province of Pennsylvania to settle debt that he owed to William's father. Hey, Charles even named it after his dad. Dang. Sylvania, by the way, is Latin for woodlands. William, who by the way was embarrassed by the new name of his colony, founded it as a place of religious freedom that mostly attracted Quakers, Germans, Scots, Irish frontiersmen, and others fleeing religious persecution and wars. Penn today is also known for his fair treatment of American Indian tribes who lived in the colony. He founded Pennsylvania's capital, Philadelphia, in 1682. Philadelphia would quickly become a major port and commercial city. Throughout the 1700s, more and more colonists would move further west, encroaching on both American Indian claims and French claims. The British called the area west of Pennsylvania, quote, Ohio country. The name Ohio comes from the Seneca word Ohio, which translates to Great River. What Great River were they referring to? The Ohio River, of course. Anyway, a bunch of folks from Virginia created the Ohio Company to settle Ohio country and trade with American Indian tribes there. The problem was France was already there, yo. However, the British won. What became known as the French and Indian War. And then all of Pennsylvania and Ohio country were now part of Great Britain. During the years between the French and Indian War and the American War of Independence, Pennsylvania's borders changed a few times. Famously, Jeremiah Mason and Charles Dixon drew up the Mason-Dixon line, which officially became the southern border, and over time, an informal boundary between free states in the north and slave states in the south. Ohio country never had many slaves, but it did have a lot of violence and turmoil in the years between the French and Indian War and the American War of Independence. But during the American War of Independence, Pennsylvania saw much more violence and turmoil. Pennsylvania, well, Philadelphia specifically, was where the new country of the United States began, where the First and Second Continental Congresses met, and where the Declaration of Independence was signed. In addition to Philadelphia, Lancaster and York even temporarily served as capitals during the war. After independence was secured, the Congress of the Confederation continued to meet in Philadelphia, and it remained the country's capital for a few years. That Congress of the Confederation created the Northwest Territory in 
1787, and a dude named Rufus Putnam led a group of revolutionary veterans to settle in Ohio the next year. Marietta, Ohio became the first European-American permanent U.S. settlement in Northwest Territory. Many American Indian tribes still lived out there, and treaties were broken as they were pushed further and further west due to American encroachment on their lands. During the Northwest Indian War of 1785 to 1795, a confederation of tribes united to fight the Americans and their American Indian allies. That confederation of tribes lost and had to give up lots of territory, including most of modern-day Ohio. As I hinted at earlier, Pennsylvania was one of the first states in the Union, but that didn't mean it didn't also have some chaos during those years. In the early 1790s, a bunch of farmers in western Pennsylvania organized to not pay the federal tax on certain alcoholic beverages, even when federal authorities showed up in person trying to collect them. This became known as the Whiskey Rebellion, and it only ended when freaking President George Washington himself and 15,000 soldiers showed up to put it down. By the end of 1801, Ohio's population had swelled to 45,000, and it prepared for a path to statehood. When it did become a state, 14 months later, it rejected slavery. And for many decades afterward, runaway slaves would cross the Ohio River into Ohio as they escaped the South. 45,000 people? That's cute. Around that time, Pennsylvania had around 650,000 people and was the second largest state in the Union by population, really having a strong influence on the rest of the country. Over the following decades, only New York would dominate more. In fact, only New York had more electoral votes than Pennsylvania between the years of 1796 all the way up to 1960. From 1811 to 1813, Ohio found itself impacted by Tecumseh's war between Shawnee leader Tecumseh and his Confederacy and the United States. It overlapped with the War of 1812 with the British. After it was all over, pretty much every American Indian tribe had lost control of the Great Lakes region, and things calmed down in both states over the next several decades, until the American Civil War, that is. At that time, both Pennsylvania and Ohio were the second and third largest states in the country by population. Both stayed with the Union, of course, and played critical roles in the war, and critical Union leaders came from both states. While Ohio didn't see much action during that war, Pennsylvania was where the biggest, bloodiest, and most famous battle took place, the Battle of Gettysburg, which we now see as a major turning point of the Civil War. For the rest of the 1800s, industrialization dramatically changed both states, and both became economic powerhouses that most of the rest of the country came to depend on. Between the Civil War and the end of the 1800s, the population of both states doubled, and that rapid growth continued for the first half of the 1900s. Since the 1960s, the growth has cooled off as many factories in both states have shut down, hence the aforementioned term Rust Belt. However, the economies of both today have diversified quite a bit and have attracted a lot of business opportunities due to a lower cost of living compared to other places in the country. Although, according to Forbes magazine, Pennsylvania is currently a better state for business. Although it obviously varies from city to city, overall, Ohio has a lower cost of living than Pennsylvania. Ohioans do pay more in taxes overall. That said, Pennsylvania has the highest gas tax in the country. Okay, let's see what other differences. Oh yeah, well this surprised me a bit. Pennsylvania is bigger, but just by about 9%. Ohio's population is a little bit more spread out. Pennsylvania's is more in the eastern and western parts. I'm sure the mountains have a lot to do with it. Pennsylvania definitely has more mountains than Ohio. The Appalachians run right through it. Driving across the state on Interstate 80 is one of the most scenic stretches of interstate in the country. Most of the state is rugged in one way or the other, whereas parts of Ohio are fairly flat, relatively speaking. While both get plenty of precipitation, Pennsylvania gets a bit more overall. Pennsylvania has more residents who were born in a foreign country. Pennsylvania has a higher median household income. It also has a lower poverty rate, or at least it did back in 2019. However, Ohio has a lower violent crime rate. More Pennsylvanians have college 
college degrees. Although, Ohio spends more per student on education. More Pennsylvanians are members of a union. Ohio borders five states. Pennsylvania borders six. The southern border of Ohio is the mighty Ohio River. And the northern border of both states is the aforementioned Lake Erie. Pennsylvania, just barely though, this 300 square mile northwestern section of the state is known as the Erie Triangle. It originally was disputed land. New York and even Connecticut and Massachusetts all made claims on it, but ultimately the federal government took over the area and sold it to Pennsylvania so that the state would have access to a freshwater port on Lake Erie. But yeah, anyway, the Delaware River makes up the eastern border of Pennsylvania. Ohio has one more national park than Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, Pennsylvania doesn't have a national park, but it has more historical landmarks. Eight American presidents were born and or spent most of their life in Ohio. You know who else is from Ohio? Geography Joe, who is from Cleveland, actually. And this is actually a, a collaboration with Geography Joe. He has just released a video about East Cleveland and it's on his channel right now. Go check it out after this one and stuff. Now, Ohioans might disagree with this, but Ohio has better roads overall. And let's face it, Ohio also has a cooler, much more unique flag. It's the only American flag that's not rectangular. I'm sorry, Pennsylvania. Ohio has the world's largest cuckoo clock, drumsticks, and basket? Although that basket is just a building. But there's also this basket. But Pennsylvania has some really big, um, Big Macs in its Big Mac Museum in North Huntingdon. In several Pennsylvania towns, they celebrate Halloween earlier than October 31st. Pennsylvania has Old Forge Pizza. Ohio has Steubenville style pizza. Convenience stores in Pennsylvania actually have good food. There is a bit of a civil war between phenomenal convenience stores in Pennsylvania. In the West, Sheets dominates. In the East, Wawa dominates. Ohio has some Sheets stores, but not Wawa stores, but it does have Casey's, so I guess that makes up for it. A lot of the differences between the two states are because of Eastern Pennsylvania existing. Eastern Pennsylvania actually has more in common with the East Coast states. I mean, Philly has more in common with New York and Washington, D.C. than the three major Ohio cities, and even Pittsburgh. Central and Western Pennsylvania definitely are much more similar to Ohio. I'll conclude by showing you the this map. As you can see, both are not that far from the exciting East Coast, yet have quite a bit lower cost of living. Not just the East Coast, former Ohio governor John Kasich once said, quote, we're within 600 miles of 60% of America. And he was right. Both are so close to everything, yet both have a reasonable cost of living. Better come take advantage of these prices before the area heats up again, baby. A reminder that this is a collaboration with one of my favorite new YouTubers these days, Geography Joe, who is from Cleveland, and he just released a video about East Cleveland. Check it out. I put the link to it in the description of this video. So which two states should I compare next? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, here's my monthly shout out to all of my Patreon supporters who donate at least 10 bucks or more to my channel. Starting with my biggest donors, Matt Standish, El Casper, Sean Connett, Austin Ciros, Nick Everett, Alicia Solberg, Andrew B, Cody Moore, Dr. Paul J. Lilly, Kristen Highland, John Johnson, Andrew Snyder, CJ Cavi, Kit Walker, Zachary F. Parker, Bradley Poole, Victor Martinez, Justin Emerson Richards, Southside Mitch, Lee Fortier, Thomas Oppenheim, Kyler James Reinhardt, Grant Hughes, Elon Capone, Robert Reichel, Adam Christians, Raquel Jones, Cal Stevens, The Geo Scholar, and Sally Thompson. Thank you all for donating and thank you for watching.